Okay, we'll start with some arm movements. We're gonna inhale the arms up. The palms come together and on the exhalation, the hands can come to the heart. We'll do three more of those. Inhale, you might wanna take the gaze up. Palms come together and then the gaze can continue to follow the hands as they come back down towards the heart and then open back up again. Thank you for coming onto your mats today. This live yoga class until we can meet in person someday soon. Last one. When you're ready, come on all fours. Sorry, I said we would start in the chair, but we'll just come on all fours if you're okay with that. Pad your knees, go back into child pose if you would. Stretch out that lower back. And when you're ready, come on to all fours once again. And let's do a little downward dog here. So later on, we'll do downward dog on a chair. So you wanna have a chair nearby. We're gonna pick those heels way, way off the floor. So come up onto your tippy toes, lift your hips back, and then drop your heels down. Press the universe away from you. Try to get that spine nice and long. And then knees to the floor. Hips to the heels, that could be your exhalation. Inhales table. And your next exhalation is downward dog. So stretch the heels back. Get a little bit of calf stretch for yourself. Take an extra breath here. And then come back onto your knees on the inhale. Exhale, child. Now, you know, in child, you could keep those toes curled under if you want a little bit more stretch. One more. Table position. Exhale. Downward dog. Stay here for extra breath. Maybe walk the dog a little bit, alternating one heel coming high up and then the other heel going way down to the earth. Plank position, if you would. So keep the back of the neck nice and long. Draw the lower part of your belly in. You can go onto your forearms if that feels more comfortable. And knees to the floor. We are going to come down onto our forearms, a little upper body. Interlace the hands so my elbows are underneath my shoulders. We're going to bring our chin down towards our knuckles or the mat. Then we're going to draw the hips back so we're getting ready to do some dolphins. Some of us are going to stay here. I really like pushing into the forearms as I move back. Those of you who want a little bit more, go into an elbow downward dog, and then maybe you come down as low as forearm plank. You don't necessarily have to. So we've got about six more of these. Whatever you're doing, try to hold the navel in towards the spine a little bit. Not that you have to squeeze it, I just don't want your belly to relax so much here, okay? Almost like you're doing that to support the lower back muscles. Let's say two more. Elbow dog, two. Elbow plank, or if you're on your knees, that works nicely also. And we all can bring our knees back down. Go back into child, reach those arms far, far out towards the front of your mat. Get those hips down. You can even press into the palms to engage the arms so that your hips, you can move the hips back a little bit more, get a little different. 
different stretch there. And when the arms are passive. Come back into table position. Curl the toes under. If this works for you, sit back on your heels. Doesn't work, you can be on your shins. Some of us are going to roll up onto the ball of the foot. Maybe have your thighs parallel to the floor. If that doesn't work, you'll be here. Okay. And then the other option is you can bring your palms at your heart center. Your chair hopefully is close around if you need that. Hands to the floor. Everybody lift your hips up, forward fold. Exhale here, bend your knees. Inhale. Walk your hands up onto your thighs. Keep your back rather flat. You can shift your knees back a little bit and lift your toes. And then use your palms, press into your thighs and come up to standing. Okay. And then we're gonna have a seat in the chair. So some of you, it might be that the chair is a little, um, you know, a little too tall for you or a little too, uh, just not the right size. So feel free, you might wanna put a block underneath your feet if it doesn't feel right, or you could put a blanket, if the chair is too low, you could put a blanket underneath your seat so that your knees are pretty much parallel. Okay, come away from the back if you would. Hands are gonna be on your thighs. You can separate your feet a little bit here. Hinge at the hips and come forward. So keep the nose pointing down towards your floor. Walk the shoulder blades a little bit in towards one another. Now press into your palms and inhale, come on up. Okay, One more of those. So I'm hinging at the hips as you would do when you're standing forward bend. I'm going to keep the back of the neck nice and long. But as I come up, I'm going to press into the thighs. Use a little upper body to come on up. Okay. You're gonna take that left leg out to the side, kind of like we're getting ready to do warrior two, and we'll do it as a warm up here. But the left leg's out to the side, the right leg's just forward. And this might be an option for you, you might just stay here. And then we're gonna take the arms up. Okay. Look out over the left fingertips. Look down at that knee, make sure it's straight out. And then little by little, if you want to stretch that right leg back, you can. So here's your warrior two. Take a breath in, relax neck and shoulders. We'll get to those for sure. We're going to tip over towards the right. And that right hand can slide down. Now you can take your gaze up for a little neck stretch. Keep moving that left shin forward a little bit. Okay, I don't want you to back off. Now, some of us might be a little lower um, than when we actually do this standing. We're going to come up into warrior two. Now, if you want to make it a little bit more challenging, you can hover off your seat. But I'd like that thigh to stay pretty much there, uh, parallel to the, to the floor. OK, don't want to work so hard. I'll just sit the hips down. Just check out that front knee. Make sure it's stable and it's facing forward. Let's tip one more time over to the right. We'll take the gaze up so we can look up. And then nice and lovingly go ahead and look down towards the right leg. And that right leg's not bent unless you kept it forward. Inhale, come on up. And relax the arms. Slide the back leg in. And walk the front leg. Roll the shoulders up, back and down a couple times. Okay, and now just the right leg's going to turn out. So I'm not sitting all the way back in the chair, and that knee's going straight towards the middle of the foot. So we'll start here for now. Take the arms up. You might even want to turn your palms up today. Gaze out over the right fingertips. So option is stay here if you want a little bit more stretch and work that back leg, you can slide the left leg back. Okay, take an in breath here. Exhale over towards your left. Look up, reach up. You can 
nice integrating breath here, feeling your side bend. We'll come back up into warrior two, palms up or down you choose. You could add a mudra if you like to. Check out the front knee just in case. Okay, let's tip over towards the left one more time. Maybe gaze up and you can turn that gaze down. Keep the back of the neck long, even when you turn it, I'm not letting the chin fall in towards the chest. We'll look up one more time. Come back into our warrior two. And then anyone wanna just lift the hips off just a little bit so you make the legs work a little bit more, feel free to do so. Strong legs, front and back. If you're lifting up or you're staying down, work that back leg. And then we'll sit the hips down if they came up. Relax the arms, slide both legs in. But I'd like you to have a little wider here because I want you to exhale forward fold and walk those arms out. You already did a child pose on your mat. Think about child pose here in the chair that you're really relaxing the head walking the arms away, side body nice and long. I'm imagining you might feel a little bit in the hips too as you're coming forward. This is optional, but anybody want to lift your hips just an inch off that chair, you can do so. If you wanna make it harder, you can take the arms out to the side. Make sure the breath is flowing. We'll bring the hands down, make sure your hips come back down, find that chair and then you can walk back up and bring the feet in. Okay, let's come to standing, get a little bit more active. Have that chair out on the front of your mat and then make sure at least two of the chair legs is on your mat so you don't slip slide away. I'd like you to do a dog here. So a chair dog, walking the feet. So I'm not there to let you know, so you can look at your Feet. Get a sense that your feet are right underneath your hips. You don't have to grip the chair, but it's there. You can get this nice length in your spine. Some of us might have to bend the knees, and I would encourage that just to get those hips to move back a little further. Now, kind of notice what the belly's doing here. We started in the beginning with some belly press. But notice if you're back has curved or round. See if you can draw the navel in. Some of us, I know we have a tendency um, to let the hips, uh, sorry, the ribs kind of drop here. So you might just want to draw the lower part of the belly in, maybe even your ribs in a little bit. Okay. Let's walk ourselves back in towards the chair. Step the right leg back. You can still use the chair here, readjust. I would encourage you to go maybe a little wider because you happen to have a chair here in case you need it for balance. We're in warrior one, okay? If I can, I'll try to get that thigh parallel to the floor, okay? Knee right above the ankle. And then I'm gonna inhale the arms up. Now, if you need to keep the hands on the chair, you can. That back leg is nice and strong. We're gonna take the right leg and, I'm sorry, excuse me, the right arm, circle it around and bring it onto your right hip. You can keep the left arm up. And then if you want, if you're ready, it's still early in the practice, but if you wanna slide that right hand down the back leg. So options are I can just keep the left hand on the chair. I don't have to do the back bend. And then go ahead and bring that back arm around. Kind of nice, especially if you're quite wide here, you have the chair. We're gonna step that back foot forward. Take a breath and prepare for the other side. Okay, readjust the feet. See what your hips and your knees will allow you to do today. The back heel, I'm leaving it off the ground because I happen to have the chair, so I have a little extra support for balance, okay? Stay here or take the arms off. Maybe I simply keep the gaze forward. If I wanna look up a little bit, I can. If 
That left hand wants to circle around, maybe start on the hip. I'm lifting up through the whole front part of the body. And if I want to slide the left hand down the leg, I can. So it is a back bend if you're doing this degree of it. Honor the wisdom of your body. And then let's go ahead and bring the back arm around. Use the chair if it's there and slide that back leg in. So we'll roll the shoulders up, back and down again. Dress some neck. So what I'd like you to do, and most of you have done it before, you keep your shoulders back a little bit, but jet your chin forward. And then bring the chin in towards the throat. And then kind of bring the chin forward and back. I kind of call it like a chicken neck. You're sticking the chin out and then you're bringing it back in. But I don't want to just roll the shoulders forward because I don't feel as much stretch. I get it on the side of the neck. One more. Good. And release. Interlace the hands behind your back. Draw the knuckles down. Take both arms, keep them straight, but take them over to the right and drop your left ear over towards the left. Let the head be heavy, let the legs be engaged. Those knuckles keep reaching over towards the right. Head heavy. Okay. Inhale, come on up. Let the hands slide back. They're going to go over to the left. Draw the knuckles down so arms stay straight. Head goes over to the right. So be mindful of your legs. You're pretty much in Tadasana. Just changing up the head and the arms a little bit here. If you have to bend the elbows a little bit, that's okay. Nice big breaths. Let the head come up, let the arms go back and release. And let's go ahead and rotate the wrist a couple times in each direction. Okay, remember that uh, chair dog we did? We're going to do it again, but we're going to add a balancing pose here. So do make sure. Two legs of the chair are on your mat, at least. Go back into the chair dog. And then take your right leg off the floor, relatively straight on that bottom leg, your left leg. And then do make sure the right leg is nice and straight. See if you can square off the hips a little further towards the ground. Keep the back of the neck long. And I know you might not be looking at your device, but Hopefully I'll be clear. The back toes can be pointed or flexed, that foot that is. Spine nice and long, just like you were in your chair dog. And then anyone wants to take the left arm down towards the floor. So keep length in the spine. Just took the left arm down to the floor, like I'm reaching that down, reaching the back heel back, and then bring that left arm back up onto the chair. Bring your left, uh, excuse me, your right leg down, and let's walk in towards the chair before we do the other side. Okay, so using chairs doesn't always have to be easy, let it be challenging. Let's walk back a little bit. You know your capability today. And pay attention, like John Caput Zen in the beginning, pay attention that mindfulness. If you have to bend the knees, bend the knees a little bit. So we're going to take the left leg off the ground. Now you could slide along your mat and then gradually lift it. Maybe it doesn't go all the way up. You could take it about hip high. Squaring off the hips and shoulders. 
try not to lean one way or the other, okay? If it's too much on that bottom leg, you have an option of micro bending in a little bit. You have the support of the chair, keep your focus point, okay, keep the spine long, hip square, and then anyone wants to drop that right fingertips down to the floor. You might even be able to touch the floor, so that gives you a little bit more balance. But check in with the hips are doing, what the back leg is doing, and definitely keep that spine nice and long. Okay, we can bring that right arm back up, bring the left leg down, take your time walking in towards the chair. Okay. You can just scoot the chair away. We'll come back, back to that in a little bit. But we're gonna take our feet nice and wide. You did warrior two on the chair. Now we're gonna do warrior two standing. So we're gonna turn, we'll go to the right side first. We'll bend the right knee. Now remember when you were sitting in that chair, now of course you have the support of the chair, but can you go a little lower? Answer might be no, but just see where your warrior is. You can have your chair around if you just want it for a little support or go back to the chair warrior we did in the beginning. Palms are gonna come at the heart center. So back toes are in, front shin moving over towards the right. Let's just take the left arm to the back wall and then the other arm. Now I'm flexing through my palms to get a little wrist and forearm stretch lifting up the front and back toes to make sure they're not working so hard. So notice if you're kind of leaning over towards the right, I'd rather you just keep your ears, shoulders, and hips in the same alignment. And then straighten out those fingertips. You can look out over your right fingertips if you like. Okay, so same thing we did in the chair. We're gonna tip over towards the left. So you can slide the hand down you might want to look straight up. You could even take that top arm overhead, but I want to keep moving my front shin forward, that right shin. Gaze wherever you like, back leg really taunt, like really engaged. Inhale, come up to the warrior two. Now we're going to add lateral angle here. So you can use the forearm on the thigh. The top arm comes up and over. If you happen to have a block or you want to let the arm be straight, you can do that as well. Let's look up. Let's look down to make sure, see where the knee is. Did it just back off? Is it a little to the right or left? And then use the power of the legs to inhale, come on up. Front leg can straighten, toes in. Let's go right to the other side. Left toes out to the left. So just imagine you're sitting in your chair. How low were you? Of course, you had weight in the chair, so it probably didn't affect your knees or your hips. So take that into consideration. We'll start with the palms at the heart center and concentrate on the legs right now and the position of the ears, shoulders, and hips. I always have to look at that front knee to make sure it's not rolling in. We'll take the right uh, left arm, uh, right arm, I'm sorry, back, and then extend out through your left arm. You can do that palm thing if you want to stretch the forearms or palms up maybe. Gaze out over towards the left, toes relaxed. Nice full breaths. Let the legs do all the work here. We're gonna tip over towards our right. The arm can go straight up or overhead. You might want to look up or down. Move that left shin forward just a little bit. Ujjayi breaths might be nice here. On the inhale, we'll come on up. Okay, lateral angle. How does that top arm want to float? A little bit of shoulders. If I look up, I'm going to add a little neck stretch. Toes relax. Let's come back into warrior two. 
One more reverse warrior. Back into warrior two. Straighten the leg, toes in. We can come forward here. So grab a chair, block, whatever you want, if you desire that, into this nice wide angle pose. You may choose to bend the knees a little bit. You might even want to shift the hips just a little side to side or even the torso. That will get into your hips a little bit more. Okay, wherever my hands are, I'm going to bring them right underneath my shoulders. Okay, we're going to sweep the right arm up towards the sky and then bring it back down. So again, you can grab a block, bend your knees. Let's sweep the left arm up, look at it, reach, stretch, modify if you need to, come back down. One more time on each side. The inhale is when I sweep up, and the exhale when I bring the arm, the hand down. I'm a little wide here, so I'm going to heel toe in a little bit. You might want to bend your knees or do the same thing. And then inhale, take the arms out to the side, float up nice and slow. And the arms release. So you might still be a little wide here. You can walk or jump in. And then we're going to grab our chair again and have a seat. Okay. So a little bit more hips here. We're going to cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Okay. So if you need a little foot massage while everybody gets set up, feel free to do that. I'm going to use the right hand to encourage that hip to open up a little bit more, not so much on the knee, but more of the thigh. So I'd like you to hinge at the hips. You'll stop when you need to. So try to keep the back of the neck long. So I know it it might be hard, like if you're trying to look at me, but try to keep the spine nice and long. Feel it in that right hip. Okay. Anybody that wants to take the hands to the seat of the chair and lift your hips, I'm using my hands to lift my hips just a little bit off of the chair. In my back, I'm trying to keep it rather flat. I just lift it up, take care of both knees here. And then if the hips came up, sit the hips down. And then anybody want to fold forward, let the arms release, let the head release, and you'll get a little bit more hip stretch. Okay. If it's enough, just being up on that shin, feel free to do so. Some of you might not get a stretch, so you let the whole body fall over. This is one of the magic four pose, poses Rama Birch talks about. She says this can help really release the sacrum. Okay, when you're ready, come on up. We'll still stay here. I want to do a twist. So that left hand can come onto your right knee, right hand grabbing some part of the chair, lift up nice and long, and then make a little twist over towards your right. Okay. You grab any part of the chair, or maybe your hand will just come to the seat of the chair. And exhale, release. One more time, forward fold, because you just did a twist. So we'll do a little counter pose, see if that hip feels any differently. And on the in breath, come on up. Okay. Let's just see how that leg hip feels compared to the other. And let's come over to the other side. Want a little foot massage here? Give yourself a little foot massage. You can even encourage that hip to open up a little bit more. Do make sure the bottom uh, foot is right underneath the knee so it's not too far forward or out to the side. Okay, here, hinging at the hips, just coming forward to get that aha moment. And that left hip. 
Relax the neck and the jaw. Where's the mindfulness? In the breath, maybe. Maybe it's still back there in that left hip because you can really feel it. Anybody wants to release over those legs a little bit more. And here you can really let the head go as well, wherever you are, even if you're up a little higher, you can let the back of the neck relax. Okay, see where the body wants to go for your stretch. So when you let the head go, you're taking weight off of that neck from holding up that head all day. Good. Inhale, let's come on up. We're going to make a twist over to the left so you can hold on gent gently onto the knee. Take whatever support of the chair and let your body come over towards the left. I'm kind of using my arms to bring me around a little bit, a little bit more twist perhaps. And then back off nice and slow. One more counter pose. Here's our forward fold. Whatever that might look like, I'm more important of what it feels like. A little bit in the hip, relaxing the neck and the shoulders. Okay, nice and slow. Come on up and uncross. I'd like you to Kind of just bring your forearms down onto your thighs. You can separate your feet just a little bit here. And then take your head a little side to side. Now I'm not dropping it, it's just staying nice and long, but I'm taking it over towards one shoulder, then the nose is pointing down and then taking it over to the other side. Next time it comes back to center, I'm gonna bring the hands towards the floor maybe right underneath the shoulders. If you so desire, you can lift the hips off the support a little bit and sweep that right arm out to the side, maybe up to the sky. Feel free to sit in that chair, it's there if you want it. Bring the hand down, sweep up again towards the left side. We did different variations of this and bring that down. Just know there's a chair there, so find it. Let your hips come back down. Everybody bring your palms onto your thighs. Draw the elbows in towards one another. Press into your thighs with your hands. Inhale, come on up and walk those feet in. I want to do a little something for the knees today, especially if you have arthritis in your knees. So you're going to slide that right heel along the floor and then lift it up so the knees are side by side. Heel comes down, slides back in. But you have to sit up nice and straight and hopefully not to the back of the chair. So I'm gonna slide the heel out, bring it up, pause. I'm gonna work your hip flexors here a little bit and bring it back in. Let's just do two more to each side. So it wouldn't necessarily be yoga, but if you got a hard back chair and you're watching TV or watching a movie, you might want to do a few of these stretches, incorporate them in your day. Or if your office chair would permit you to do something like this. You just don't want to be slouching back, okay? Not so, I don't think it would work so well like sitting in a, on a recliner or on a couch. Last time on that left side and bring it back down and in. So more to the edge of the chair. We're gonna take on to these sidebars or whatever kind of chair you have. Okay, a couple options here. We're gonna pick the feet off the floor. So my back is touching the chair, but I'm kind of like in this little V shape, like an upward boat really. And then you can extend your legs out and then bring them back in. So let me give you an alternative. You might just do one leg, you know, maybe four times and then the other, or you can do, six or 10 of these. Just bring the legs out a little bit, bring them back in. If that feels too much, maybe just tap them down to the floor and lift them up. You'll be working your hip flexors, your abs here. Check in with the lower back. You can do one leg at a time. If you do a little straight out, definitely feel it in my quads. 
let's say three more, whatever you're doing. Make sure you're even on both sides if you're just doing one leg. Okay. Toes to the floor. Exhale, forward fold here. Inhale, come on up. And then come on to your tippy toes. We did that in your downward dog. We try to come, maybe not the tippy toes, but the ball, the foot, and lift the heels up. Hands on your thighs, and then press into your thighs a little bit and lower those heels down. Okay, now this time lift your toes up, spread them nice and wide. Keep the toes up. You can hold on to the seat of the chair. Let's do one more neck stretch. We're gonna drop that right ear over towards the right. I might let the right hand just stretch out a little bit. And I'm kind of leaning. My hips are staying on, but I'm, my hand's got the chair, so I'm not gonna topple over. And then if this right hand wants to come up and give the head you know, a little bit more weight, may not. Release the hand and bring the head back up, okay? Other side. So first the head drops over, then I might reach the arm out, hold on, lean, drop the head. There might be enough stretch. I get a, holding on, I get a nice stretch down through the outside of my, my neck. And then the left arm can come up and maybe just a little weight there. Don't force it, you adjust. And then the hand will release, head will float up and relax. Okay, we're gonna come onto the floor. Um, let's use the chair and then we'll come onto your back and I'll give you an option of what you might want to do here. First, we're going to put the legs on the chair, but I'm going to scoot my butt in a little bit and see if my hands can grab the legs of the chair. Okay. And my feet are going to come to the edge of the chair. So if you could see that before you, you actually got down, don't you probably don't want anything underneath your neck. Some of us, let me, here's your first option, just legs on the chair. This is gonna be a, a modified uh, shoulder stand or bridge, we could call it. But see if you wanna lift your hips up, okay? That's gonna put more weight on your shoulders. So see if that's a good idea. It's definitely gonna put more weight on your neck. And then I'll lower back down to see if that's even an option, okay? Let's do it again. For those of you who want to, modified version, just let the legs rest on the chair. So here I might walk the shoulder blades in just a little bit. It's a nice little inversion. You're not in full shoulder stand, so it's not as much weight on your head. And please don't turn your head here. Okay, if you lift the hips up, don't turn your head because that's more weight. But you can feel the organs going upside down. I always think they're happy going upside down. Maybe lift the hips up a little bit more. Some of you might want to release one leg off the chair and even bring it behind your head. And then you can bring that back and down. Go slow, be very mindful. Usually don't do uh, shoulder stands in class because I'm not so sure of your neck and that, and that's only more for advance students, but also if you haven't had any whiplashes or you don't have degenerative disc disease. So play just a little bit more, meaning keep the hips up, take one leg behind you if you want. And I trust that if you normally do shoulder stand or plow, that you'll be mindful as you go into that. But I'm not gonna lead you into it. Two more breaths. This is a nice way to look at your belly when the hips are up. You can really feel the belly or even watch it expand with breath. So nice and easy. Make sure the feet are back on the chair. 
Slowly lower the hips down. And then we'll pause with the legs on the chair. Your feet might have to go through that space if there is a space on that chair. That can be a neck stretch as well because you've got more weight onto your shoulders and your neck. So let's take the head a little to the side, inside, back to center, make sure it's okay. Bring it over to the other side. And then back to center. Pause here. Take your arms up overhead if you would. Interlace the hands behind your head. Okay. Keep the elbows nice and wide. Look up towards the ceiling. Either rest here or press your shoulders in towards the floor. Okay. And then Lift your shoulders and your head straight up towards the ceiling. Don't go in towards your legs, just a little bit, and lower down. Let your head be heavy. Four more times. Take a breath. I like to exhale as I come up and pause and keep the breath out, and then lower down. Adding mindfulness. If it doesn't work for your neck, I would say what you could do is just Keep your head down, but just lift your legs off the chair. And some of you might want to do both. Lift your calves off the chair and then go straight up towards the ceiling. Do check in with your lower back. That's most important. Draw the navel down towards your mat. Using the breath as you exhale, come up. Pause so you can feel that, that contraction in your abdominal muscles. Let's just do one more for good luck. And then as the head comes down, if the legs went up, you can bring them down. Bring just the right knee in towards your chest. You can use your hands to hug that knee in. Hug it, hug it, hug it. And release it. And the other side, hug the knee in. and release, arms by your sides. Calf muscles still resting on your chair. Inhale, lift your hips up and take your arms overhead. On the exhale, they don't have to come up very high. I don't have my feet to the edge of the chair like in the last pose. So I'm just lifting the hips up a little bit, kind of like a bridge pose and the arms go up and then the hips and the arms come Release here, bend both knees in towards your chest a little bit more. Roll over to one side. And coming into a cross-legged position, please. So you can leave your chair there in case you want it for relaxation. You can use the legs on the chair. Use support of the blocks or whatever. And we're going to roll around here. So I'm using my hands a little bit to hold my legs down to create a little bit more of a hip stretch. Me, I always feel it in the waistline and the lower back, and then maybe three times in the opposite direction, please. Hmm. Coming back to center, extend the legs out. Arms behind you. We're going to circle that left arm up and then reach out across to your right foot. And then you can watch it as the arm comes up and back and down. And then reach, inhale, and exhale forward. Inhale, reach it up. You can look up. Exhale the arm down. Two more times on each side. Keeping the spine rather long. Try not to round even as you come forward. Coordinate movement with breath. Usually inhale up, exhale the arm down. A little cross here. And hamstrings, no doubt, when you come forward. One more time each side. 
rolling that shoulder around, get a little bit more shoulders, keep all 10 toes coming towards you. If you can reach the toes, you can make sure they're coming towards you. Good. Next time that right arm goes back, you can come back into a cross-legged position to a forward fold your last hip stretch here, maybe even a little rock and roll side to side. So we got a little bit of neck, a little bit of shoulders, some hips and balancing, and then come back to a cross leg position, nice long spine. Inhale, take the arms up, look up, Bring the palms together at the heart center, just like we started the class. Two more of those. Inhale, lift up through the whole front part of the body. Watch the hands come to the heart center. We got one more of these. Good. Okay. So I'd like to give you a chest opener. If you so desire, I'm going to grab my blanket. You, if you have a bolster, use a bolster. Use two blankets. Roll the blanket. Keep it folded. What I'm going to offer you is a couple minutes. You can use the chair if you want to or not. Um, you can sit on the blanket or off if you want more of a back bend. What I was thinking, if you're going to use legs on the chair, it's not that the blanket has to come right against your sacrum. It might feel better if it just hits you across the shoulder blades. And then you can readjust the props, okay? Probably want the back of your knees to rest onto the chair. It seems it relaxes the legs. I'm gonna do a little bit more shoulders here. So I'm gonna come out of the pose, but you go ahead and set up in the way you want. Options, two blankets, one blanket, buttocks on, buttocks off. What feels best, chair or no chair, optional. But I'd like those arms to go out into a cactus, which is bent elbows, so that your shoulders can drop down over the blanket. You probably could exaggerate the uh, breath here a little bit more, especially in the upper chest. And this is a reading from Martha Graham. She says, all that is important is that is this one moment in the moment. Make the moment important, vital, and worth living. Do not let it slip away unnoticed and unused. So stay in this moment. And in this more passive posture, you might not feel so much happening. If you want a little bit more in the chest, maybe even the arms behind the head or over the head. If you feel it in the back, readjust the spine a little bit forward or back. Okay. Maybe just another minute here. Moment by moment. Noticing the breath. Maybe one arm goes back a little bit more than the other to see the range of motion on that side. And then maybe the other arm might back off and go back a little bit, alternating movements. Be creative. You know that once we take the arms overhead, the back will arch a little bit. So it becomes more of a back bend. If you want to leave that out, the arms can be closer to your sides. For the last three breaths here, maybe exaggerate the breath. Exhale, let's do this. Two more breaths. Inhale together. Exhale through the mouth. Let the jaw, maybe a little sound or sigh come out. And then one more time, fill the lungs completely. 
Pause up at the top and then exhale. Good. Let those arms come a little closer to your side body. Okay. Knees will come in towards your chest. We're going to transition off of that support and you'll come back onto your backs. Okay. So we've got a, just a couple more poses here before you go into Shavasana. So if you want to use that blanket for your head, you can. You can slide the chair away or maybe you want to put your legs on the chair. That's fine. We're going to do a gentle twist here on our backs but it's okay if the chair's there, okay? So, again, if the legs are on the chair or on the floor, we're gonna keep the shoulders down into the floor, hover the legs off the chair, just simply rock them over to the right. Try to keep that left shoulder down. Just know that your knees don't have to stack. That makes it more challenging. You could just let that top knee, your left knee, just go down towards the right heel or even stay up towards the ceiling if you want a little less stretch in the lower back. Head and turn towards the left. See if you can open up that whole left side of the rib cage with breath. Now to come out of this head center, you can lift one leg up and then the other leg or both at the same time. If you got a chair there, just hover through the chair as you bring the legs over to the left. Okay? So rearrange the feet, the legs here to your degree of stretch that you want on this side. And then you can add the head. You want to keep that right shoulder down. Some of you might have some shoulder issues. So, you know, a blanket underneath the shoulder can be nice as well. Breathe into that whole right side body. Exaggerate it. Moment by moment. Because in each moment, I'm sure the stretch changes up a little. Remember, one leg can come up, that top leg first, and then the other leg. We're all going to hug the knees in towards the chest. Adapada asana, move the knees away. So one hand on each knee. Exhale, I hug in. Get that stretch in the lower back. Inhale, move away a couple inches. Exhale, hug it in. Two more of these, nice and slow. The exhale is the knees in, the inhale, and come away. Okay. And then the next time the knees come in, just pause, give it a good hug, and then start to make little circles with your knees. Now those circles can get a little larger, maybe just three times each direction. And then after that, you're gonna see if there's any other pulls you wanna do. Some of you might have a more advanced practice. Maybe you want to do a shoulder stand or other poses. So let your body respond to what it needs. You may want to use the chair for the legs on the chair. That typically helps release the lower back. It's even known to be help, helpful for the shoulders and the neck as well. So once you get set up, just make sure you're warm enough. You only have about five minutes in Shavasana, but of course you can stay there longer and just tune us out. I would invite you once you get set up is to rearrange, just make sure clothing isn't bunched up or you know, that you're a little chilly or whatever it might be. Give the mind less to do and let the body relax. So feel free to tune me out. Just take you through a, just a 
half a minute of relaxing the body, starting at the feet and the front of the legs and the back of the legs, that they really feel relaxed into your support. The belly soft with breath. Your buttocks and lower back, all nice and relaxed. It's just positioned just right. The chest moves slightly with breath. The shoulders relax into your support. And that right arm and left arm are both relaxed. Position the head so it too can be relaxed. All the muscles of the face relax. And even your brain turns off. It's only this moment of deep relaxation. Gentle awareness. There might be a little light that comes in through the eyes. Movement through the arms and legs. And 
And you might want to bring those knees in towards your chest. As you transition to a nice, comfortable position, if you need more time, you're in your own home to stay. And with one more quote by John Kabat Zen called Heartfulness. In Asian language, the word for the mind and the word for the heart are the same word. So when you hear the word mindfulness, we have to inwardly also hear heartfulness in order to cast. It's even as a concept and especially as a way of being. So bringing the palms to our heart, in a heartfulness day as we go into the rest of our time on this Friday afternoon. If you'd like to join me, join our voices in our homes and around the universe in that sacred sound of all by taking breath in. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste, everyone. Have a blessed weekend. Feel free to stay on if you want to ask any questions about the class. And then after that, if you want to visit with anybody else that's on the screen, you can.